Morning, 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 everybody. How you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. I am Sean Butler. Bugsy Malone is over my shoulder that you can see her just there. I hope you're all happy and healthy doing the things you love with the people that you love doing them with. Guys, we've got some interesting Tottenham news. I think it's going to split opinion as well, and I'm going to give you mine. It's all about Timo Werner, ex-Chelsea, current Leipzig striker slash forward slash winger slash second striker slash utility player that apparently, according to Pletty Goal, the man who knows a thing or two about a thing or two in German football, has come out today saying Tottenham are on the verge of signing him on a six-month loan deal with an option to buy at the end. It's interesting. I was going to spend today talking about the game last night, and I probably will just spend a couple of seconds linking the two together, because I think they are pertinent. And we're going to get into it. Before we do, guys, smash the like button for me on the video if you enjoy the content. It really does help the channel out. Hit the subscribe if you haven't already. And even if you have, due to hashtag YouTube shenanigans, please double check that you still are. Hit the notification bell and drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on today's Tottenham News update. Timo Werner, guys. <laughs> I already tell the comment section is going to be filled with make sense, doesn't make sense, good signing, trash signing. Look, straight out of the bat, if you want to go and look on YouTube and you type in Timo Werner, then the first extended answer will be goals or best bits or highlights and then followed swiftly by Timo Werner misses. And as a player, if you just reflect on his Premier League story at Chelsea, you will find a lot of misses that only Timo Werner could miss. It is, he's a very sort of divisive character. But you know what, if you zoom out a little bit and think about the player in general and look at his career stats, then they're pretty impressive. Nearly 300 goal contributions, goals or assists, over 450 games. A goal or assist, two in every three. You can't sniff at that. On his day, he is an incredibly talented, versatile, useful player. He's very fast. He's strong. He can drive at players. When he plays in the support striker role, he can come back and connect things up. He's got a better first touch than Richarlison, than arguably than Brennan Johnson. He can play on the right, he can play on the left, he can play in the nine, and he can play in the 10 sort of role or the support striker role, the false nine, whatever you want to call it. <sighs> I'll be honest, guys, I think it makes sense. Do I want him, if I thought we were signing him for a four-year contract and paying 30 million euros or 40 million euros, do I think I'd be happy then? No. But do I think it makes sense now, given the scenario and the circumstances we find ourselves in? Absolutely. And here's why. First and foremost, it's a loan deal. I think the loan fee would probably be a couple of million euros, a couple of million pound, which isn't, you know, the end of the world. His wages will be affordable. And he gives us an option. First and foremost, he gives us an option. An option off the left, an option off the right, an option in either of the forward central positions. Versatility is something that Ange likes to look for. On top of that, guys, when you look at the situation we find ourselves in, with Sonny away for six weeks, with Perisic having played his last game, with Manuel Solomon not yet returning from injury, with Richarlison's form, I look, I mean, purple patch aside, you know how I feel about the player, he's not good enough, and last night, he reminded me, and I hope everybody else, why I feel the way I do about him. His link-up play is terrible. His first touch is awful. It looks like he's running through cement or quicksand. And ultimately, unless it's put on a plate for him, he is more likely to mess it up than not. Then you've got a late over Liz is out for two months. We don't know what Manuel Solomon's going to be like when he comes back. So if something was to happen to Richie we would have to pivot to Dane Scarlett, who couldn't do it at Ipswich and couldn't do it at Portsmouth in League One and the Championship, respectively. There's issues at the top end of the pitch at the moment, massive issues. And Timo Werner might come in and do a job until Sun gets back. And if he was to come in and score the winner against Manchester United or against Brentford, either off the bench as an option 
or even in the starting role, he almost paid for himself just to get us through until Sonny gets back. God forbid something was to happen to Sonny whilst away on Asia duty. God forbid something was to happen to Richie. We would be without anyone meaningfully experienced in the Premier League who can play in that role. And to me, you need to go and find some, some cover for that. The problem is, you're in the January transfer window. When, diff when transfers are difficult, 10 times more difficult than any other, or than, than the summer window, we're also talking about a particular position, a particular market that is in significantly short supply and significantly high demand. Players like Santiago Jimenez are obviously the dream, but it's incre incredibly unlikely that you'd be able to prize him away from his current club in January, absent an astronomical fee. And you know that Daniel Levy and Tottenham Hotspur are not the sort of people that pay astronomical fees under pressure just for paying the asking price. We have to negotiate and haggle and it doesn't ever kind of push us in the right direction. It takes too long. It's just the situation and the scenario that we happen to be as a football club. So for me, given the circumstances, if you can get a player like Werner in for six months, and ideally the most useful period in that time, absent an injury later on in the season, is right now, then I think it makes a lot of sense. It's a low risk deal. Obviously, there's no commitment. And I said, I have said several times over the last few months on these transfer update videos, that the last thing that I want Tottenham to do is to make knee jerk reaction signings that commit us to four and five year contracts on players that are emergency buys to cover for injuries or you know, suspension issues that we currently face. I'd rather us not do that. I'd rather us keep our eye on the bigger prize of the project that we're in. This is phase one. Morning, guys. This is phase one. Phase two is next season. Hopefully by then we'll have had three windows with Ange. He can have moved on most of the players he doesn't want, move in most of the players he does, and we can have a real crack at it. If something materialises this season, then obviously all for the better. And we do have an opportunity this season to do something given the fact that most teams in the Premier League are capable of losing or winning on their day against anybody else. It's a fascinating season. And so you're kind of torn between the short-termism of let's push us, do something now to see what we can manifest this season, which might end up resulting in tying yourself down to four and five year contract with players that aren't really the, the number one or number two target. I don't want Tottenham to do that. I don't want Tottenham to do that as a centre-back. I don't want Tottenham to do that in the, in, the, in the midfield. I don't want us to do that in the forward line. That's why I'm an advocate for, if you want to bring Calvin Phillips in, fine, but only on a loan. If you want to bring Jota in, fine, but only on a loan. Someone like Conor Gallagher, I see the vision, I see the plan, and I'm personally on board with it. If Andrew's on board with it, I'm on board with it. If Calvin Phillips comes in on the permanent, I'm terrified that this guy, we haven't seen enough of this guy recently to know what he is about anymore. Is he the same guy? Last night to me showed how lacking in creativity we are without Pape Sarr sitting in the midfield controlling things and without Sonny up the top end. It didn't work last night. Decky, Brennan Johnson on the left hand side didn't really work even though he was feisty and moving at it in the first 15 minutes. Richarlison was terrible. Decky on the right was awful. We're shoehorning players back into positions to make space or to, to get the best players on the paper into the 11 because of how thin we are. Decky is better in the 10. Brennan Johnson is by far better in the right. Richarlison plays better when there's creativity at the top end and when Brennan Johnson, when we're moving quickly and Brennan Johnson can put it and zip it across. Without that creative spark in the midfield, everything was slow and then Richarlison becomes irrelevant. But to me, you don't go and make knee-jerk commitment signings now that you're going to regret in three or four months time when everyone's back and then you can't shift them on. So loan deals make sense in this market unless you're absolutely convinced that he is, this guy is part of the next four year plan for Tottenham Hotspur. And Tino Werner certainly isn't the player that you want to commit to because you know he was brilliant in Leipzig and Germany generally before he came to Chelsea. It didn't work out in the Premier League for Chelsea. He's gone back to Leipzig. 
Yeah. Last season, he scored 15 goals for Leipzig. It's not a bad return. 16 goals, I think it was. And as I say, two goal or assists every three games over his career. It remains to be seen whether or not the reason why it didn't work out for Chelsea is because of the team he was in, because of the system that he was playing, because of the Premier League, the pace of the Premier League being different, because he failed to settle in London. There's a number of factors that we, I mean, I'm not fully versed on. But in terms of, can I see something in the player that makes the transfer make sense? 100%. Can I see something in the logic of the situation that we're in that makes the transfer make sense? 1 million percent. I'd rather Tottenham spend the next 25 days figuring out who do you want? Are they available now? If not, then let's find out whether we think we can get them in the summer. And if we can, and you still need someone else now, then go and get a loan if possible. Pay loan fees. I'd much rather pay a loan fee, a hefty loan fee. Five million quid, fine, six months. Not the end of the world, right? You've just got rid of 200 grand off of the wage bill in getting rid of, hopefully, Eric Dyer and Hugo Lloris. Two million quid, sorry, 200 grand a week is essentially nearly a million pound a month, right? So by the end of the season, you'll have paid off the loan fee for Werner anyway. And like I say, for me, it's low risk, high return, high reward. And I don't think you're going to do much better. I really don't. I don't know where else you're going to go. Santiago Jimenez right now, to get it done right now, would take an astronomical fee. Isn't, it's, not in our, it's not the way we do business, is it? So I'm okay with it. I actually think it's sensible, logical. And if we do get him in, if we do get him in, then I think that puts paid to the idea of getting in a Jota. I think that put, because I think, you know, he can play left, right or centre. I think that pay, puts paid to you know, any sort of hopes of getting a striker in, in January. So then you turn your attention back to Radu Dragosin. You hope that's getting done and we think that's close, don't we? I think that I'm still very confident that's about to happen. As long as the Eric Dyer thing materialises. And you could see last night that Ange Postacoglu, when asked a direct question with Ben Davies' injury, can you afford to lose Eric Dyer? And he said, yes. I think that's an indirect way of saying it's 90% certain that he's going to go to Bayern Munich. It's okay to happen regardless of the situation and it needs to happen in order for Dragosin to come in. I don't think Dragosin comes in unless Eric Dyer leaves. Well, I hope that he would, but really between the lines, that's what it sounds like. It's a make room for one with the other. We've then got to find new homes for Serge Regulon, for Jed Spence, and... Uh, maybe for Jaffet Tanganga and Tangi and Dombele, if we can find homes for them, then we've got space in the squad for one more. And that, for me, one more is a midfielder. Now, despite Conor Gallagher saying he doesn't want to leave and Pochettino saying it's down to the player, he has the say in his career. He has 18 months left. If he doesn't want to go, then, you know, I think you have to look elsewhere. You don't really want a player that's coming here under duress. But... I mean, I think it makes so much sense. I think it's a moot point. I think he just doesn't want to leave. So then we look elsewhere. We look elsewhere for a number eight to come in or a, a utility player that can come in and, and add value. Because you know what? Last night, guys, Oli Skip once again demonstrated why he isn't it. He runs around like a toddler in a playpen. You know, he looks like he's very busy, but when you get the ball to his feet, he can't get it to the next person's feet. Quickly enough, he slows things down. It looks to me pretty clear and obvious that uh, Pierre Mahoybier isn't liked by Ange Postacoglu. The, the fact that he's not playing him and playing Oli Skip in front of him is has to be a testament to some, you know, relationship issue. Because for me, Hoybier is ten times the player that Oli Skip is, and we needed we needed to make change a different change earlier last night. You know, they took off Giolo Celso and I thought he was the only creative spark. Again, question marks over the substitutions. It should have been Oli Skip, but the fact that Oli Skip stayed on the pitch tells me again, like I say, that Pierre and Hoybier isn't fancied. So if Hoybier wants to leave and we can find the right buyer for him, but I don't want it to be a loan with an option. It has to be a loan with an obligation for me because you don't want any more of these loans that come back to be, you know, anchors on your plans every transfer window. There's so many additional problems Additional time sucks, you know, having to spend time thinking about the next future, the next future home of a player that you don't want. It's like, it's like doing your taxes, you know, 
every single month you've got to do your taxes. No, you do it once, get it out of the way and then forget about it until next year. But like loan, loan deals for players that you don't want are a nightmare. So if, if, if Ange doesn't want Hoybier, then in an ideal world, you've got to find a way to do a loan with, a, with an obligation or a straight transfer, get the money in and then put it towards getting someone in who can up the overall level of our midfield. And there's lots of midfielders out there that can do it. It doesn't have to be a homegrown player. You know, we can, as I say, the homegrown issue is something that I think is very important, but that doesn't have to be resolved this January. That, maybe that can be resolved in the summer. I do think we need to level up on the homegrown, find someone who can come in who is a first team regular or at least an elevator of the squad depth that is homegrown because we're struggling in that department. But for now, if you can find, if you can get rid of Hoybier, you can bring in another foreign player who... Um, who, who is liked, who is part of the process, part of the plan, and, and in, in Angie's mind makes, makes the most sense. Team Overhead for me though, guys, look, I'm on board it, I am. Let me know if you are, I get it if you're not. I understand if you think that, um, you know, you, you remember the Chelsea version of him, or you, you know, like I can say, this one I think divides opinion, and I get it why people might want to take one stance. I personally choose to see the logic in it, but let me know your thoughts, are you on board or not? Like, subscribe and comment, guys, and as always, Bye-bye.